Hey guys, welcome to Game Soup Classics. This is the second episode of Game Soup Classics. The first one actually hasn't aired yet. The first one was Toe Jam Arrow, but we're back already with another one. My name's Joe. My name's Ed. So Ed, yeah. what do you know about Banjo-Kazooie? I know that I played a ridiculous amount of the game when I was a child. I know that it has a cult following for lots of good reasons, including an in incredible soundtrack by Grant Kirkhope. <laughs> okay, I just ran into that guy. I thought he was friendly. You just took damage from a carrot. I know that much. I know that there's a honeycomb hidden under the water in front of you. Mm. Oh, there is. I'm sticky, tasty honey energy. I know if you collect enough honeycombs, you get more life. This game is building on all the things that made Mario 64 great. I love this game. I've played this game every couple of years since it came out. And when it came out, I think I played it for like a year straight. There it is. There's that honeycomb. I come back to it every once in a while. It still holds up. Yeah, Joe's the one playing right now so that Ed can tell us about it. He knows a lot more about it. It does a lot of the stuff that Mario 64 originally did. Right, this garlic's but, gotta die. Yeah. Well, that's a leak, I think, or an onion. Well, but it takes everything I'll a little bit farther. That. Oh, alright, alright. Wait, right. can I interact with this thing? Oh, I can. You can, but... <laughs> I said I didn't need his help. Oh, yeah, shit. at the beginning of this game, we decided that we didn't need help from Bottles the Mole. So now we don't... Not that we need it. Uh, you can also double jump, by the way. Oh, yeah, you can, like, float with it. Yeah, he, yeah, at the beginning of the game, you can choose whether to get the tutorial or just get all your moves and go on your way. And we chose that second option. Yeah, Ed can teach me how to play, so yeah. we'll just, uh, we're just gonna go ahead. So your goal right now is to go to the top of the tower that's in the center of this area. Okay, let's do it. Yeah. And this game is pretty big. It's got... how many levels? Is it 15 levels? It's a lot of levels. There are a lot of levels in this game. Each level has 10 jiggies. The goal is to collect... oh, it must be 10 levels, because I think there's 100 jiggies. I think so, yeah. Can't get out of there, huh? I think you can double jump out from most places. Uh, oh, we can get out Oh, here. there you go, there you we'll go. Just get out here. Yeah, this, level, this game has some of my favorite characters from this generation. Uh, Clanker from Clanker's Cavern. Banjo and Kazooie, obviously. Fuck yeah. I mean, all of these characters are like dripping with personality, you know? So like Mario Mario 64 got the exploration, the 3D exploration down pretty well. But this game has a real rare, like a rare, you know, the company, not the, not the frequency. Like a rare feel, super, super rare styled. You can really just, it's dripping, you know? It's goofy, which is funny, because Ukulele just came out, and it has a lot of the th same things that this game had, and that made yeah. this game great. And Ukulele did not have the greatest reception for sticking to these principles, including and the... And neither of us has played it. No, ne neither of us has played it. Um, like, for, for example, those, those pseudo-voices, the characters don't actually have voice acting, they just go... Yeah. So that was endearing in, what was this, 98 maybe, whenever this game came out. But apparently, nobody's really a fan of it anymore. Or at least critics aren't. But, I don't know. It's kind of endearing still. So Gruntilda the Witch wants to swap looks. Because she's so... A little girl? Yeah, with a little girl. It's kind of a disturbing looking character by modern standards. Who, the girl? Yeah. I guess they all are, really. Maybe the giant eyes or something. I don't. It looks uh, yeah. kind of weird. That painting is kind of creepy. Can we jump into the painting? Let's try. You it. cannot. No, it's just a picture of Grunty. Yeah. Oh no, we can't get up there. This music, this brings back so many memories. So this game had a, a big emphasis on the, I guess you know. You don't spend a lot of time in the castle in Mario. You spend most of your time in the levels. Yeah. You spend more time in this game outside of levels. Just wandering the castle. So there's, there's a process to it. You know, you have to collect enough jiggies, which right now you have zero. So you can't complete this painting, so you can't enter the first world. I see. Right. It's visually represented there by right. the missing piece there. Just like how you needed, like, uh, five stars to enter... Hazy Maze Cave or something, you know, in, in Mario 64. Oh, right. actually, that's not true at all. But you know what I mean. That game had a star requirement. This game has a jiggy requirement. 
And there are a lot of Jiggies found just in the overworld, in the lair, instead of only within levels. So for example, I see a Jiggy. You do. This, this, you it's, have to do it's, this. It's leading me uh, along the path pretty well. Yeah. And the only other option you had was climbing up that very steep path, which you could not get up. No, not until we can run, right? Do we get a right. running? I think we get a running ability. You get it in the first stage. you can get on the bird's back, right? Yep. yep. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's an ability I you're going to use. That. I, think I did play this a little bit, I think. Oh, really? I think I either played it a little bit or, or maybe I saw you play it or something. Yeah. I have some memories of this game. That's an ability but. you use for the entire game. And you get it right away, which is something that we love. Anyway, let's go back. Oh, the dynamic music. God, if you listen closely, which you can't because I'm talking over it, but the music in this game, the overworld theme or the layer theme will always change depending on what area you're in. So it changes even here in this single room. It changes when you get close to the start of the first level. Oh, so we have to use up our jiggy to get in. Right. Yeah, they're consumed. They are consumed. So... I'll be quiet here for a minute so we can hear this nice music by Mr. Grant Kirkhope. We are a ah. Nice. So, as Rare is known to do, especially on the N64, this is a collectathon. Not nearly as bad as Donkey Kong 64. That's the one I played a lot of. Yeah. But every level in this game has 10 Jiggies, 100 Notes, 5 Jinjos. I think that's everything. Oh, also Honeycombs, which increase your maximum life. Aha, okay, so he tells you what you can do in this level eventually once you find him. So that's how you get your new abilities. You have to find the mole. <laughs> Everything is alive, and I just... I Everything. Just, I just destroyed an inanimate yeah. but alive object. Yeah. It was an animate, inanimate object. <laughs> this level had some... And it's perished. Some weird... Some weird, like... I guess we're going to have to run to get up there. Yeah. Yeah, you will, but not... You won't be able to do oh, it yet. Oh, what the fuck? Oh, oh dear. Oh, dear. Like, this is just weird. Oh, I think this I figured thing. out what to do here. Yeah, just, yeah. Gotta get him to hit these buttons. We have to outsmart this, uh... He's not this very con. smart. He's not a very smart con. Oh, cool. We got a Jiggy already. That was easy, right? Oh, that was rewarding. I feel as though I've been rewarded adequately for my efforts. And that these Jiggies will be much more difficult to get as the game progresses. Like breadcrumbs spread further and further apart until I fall into a pit of despair over a children's video game. I love video games. Who doesn't? Is this Diddy Kong? It sure looks like it, doesn't it? <laughs> Look at that face. It's funny because... I like him. For this monkey, Rare had to make a monkey that was not Diddy Kong or Donkey Kong. All they did was take his clothes off, though. Yeah, it kind of looks, looks like it's it. It's basically just naked Diddy Kong. There's yeah. no hat, but you put a hat on him as Diddy Kong. How do you get up there? Can you, can you backflip up there? Yeah, I sure can. From, no. from that trunk? From the trunk, yeah. yeah. I don't think you can. It seems, uh, it seems as though I cannot. There is a way to get up there, but I don't remember what it is. I think you have to feed the monkey. Or something. This monkey's a real jerk. Yeah, he won't let you go. What about these? Can we destroy these flowers? No. Yeah, they're just decorated. They're just for looks. Yeah, I guess we gotta we, we gotta do something with this monkey. If you um if you duck and then press C up, you can launch eggs. You might not have any eggs yet. Oh uh, yeah, I don't. Yeah, you do not. Those eggs up there is that what we're collecting that in order to launch them? Oh yeah. <laughs> Great. Well, I guess you can't do that yet. Oh, I remember what to do. Oh, you do. Let me know. You want me to tell you? Yeah. Okay, go back to that. No, don't go Let's back. Go up here. We, we, our, our time is limited. We have to push forward. Yeah, I'm, I'm, um, I'm being led along by these music notes. Anything that's golden colored, I'm being led along by. That's kind of the idea. I mean, same with Mario 64's coins. You're just led along by all these notes, you know. Oh. That's a nice tool when you're trying to let the player know where he should be going. It's kind of. Yeah, and the kind of steps. It out. The steps allow us. Are we sticking? I think we might be sticking to the steps. We might slide down here. 
Yes, we yeah. slide down here, but the steps, the step texture indicates that we can just go up the, up that incline specifically. Oh look, there's a second one. Pretty easy so far. Oh, there's also the mumbo jumbo tokens, and I think every level, or no, maybe not every single level, but many levels have transformations that you can do. So you can get turned into an ant in this level, for example, and you can get turned into a pumpkin or a washing machine. Amazing. A washing machine? Yeah. Oh, eggs. There you go. Can't see what I'm doing. There we go. Did you see something just now? I did see something off the side there. You might want to go back. Hey, it's Jinjo! Jinjo! But I wanted to continue exploring on the top here, and I had to get all these golden music notes. Golden objects. Oh, it's a skeleton. It is. It's a mumbo jumbo token, and you have one Jinjo, so you're you're well on your way to completing this level. This is a really com a completionist game because you can get everything out of every level. Are we completionists here on GS? Um, no, I'm definitely not. I'm not, but I was for this game at one point. I definitely I did 100% this game at one point. Yeah, I think I think for kids that don't have that many games. Yeah. Back in those days. And this game was you really get your your uh, your time and money's worth out of this one. This game was brutal with the com completionists because if you died, you lost all the notes that you collected. Like they didn't carry over. So if you died in a level, you had to start over and collect all the notes again. Yeah. So you better. Uh, yeah, yeah, I'll just take your word for it. Yeah, you should. So what's up here? Seems important. It is. It's the entrance to the level. Oh, this is where we came in, yeah. Yep. Well, if someone was paying attention, he would have noticed that. Right. Counts as your best note score. Try to get 100 on each world as they're needed to open the note doors. Yeah. Okay, cool. So this game kind of gates you by jiggy progress and by note progress. I guess notes are more akin to coins. Okay, so does everything just reset? Yes. Oh, Christ. Everything. All like the you, notes. Like you were just saying. Yes, like I was just saying, and then I, I actually let you walk through that door because I don't know why it's kind of an evil thing to do. But remember back up the top of the hill there? Yeah. When you found the mumbo token? That's where the the mole hill was. Bottles the mole? Yes. So when you talk to him, he gives you the ability to run, which lets you walk up these very steep passages. Man, this game has incredible music. I keep uh, I keep trying to do the the Mario 64 of oh, the long jump dash and long jump yeah, yeah, yeah long can't jump. do that nope. can't do that although you don't really need it once you get the the oh, we it? do get to keep our eggs those carry oh. over at least I forget what the move is called in this game the one you're about to get it's like the dash maybe maybe I don't remember but once you Which get one that was it to throw the eggs uh, C up and C down you might mm, yeah try it you have to hold crouch and then hit C up and C down nothing no it didn't work. Maybe you don't have the ability yet, but we have the eggs? Mm, yeah, maybe, actually. Hmm. I thought you had it from the beginning, but I might be wrong about that. Incredible. Because you collect almost everything. There we go. Talk to this dude. Hit B. You got it. Talent Trot. That's the one. Yeah, once you have this, you don't need anything like the long jump, because this... Yeah, yeah this You jump is, so this far. Speed, right? Yeah. Yeah. Hold Z, then press the left C button. Continue to hold Z while moving. Okay, cool. So pretty much for the entire rest of the game, you're going to be holding down the Z button. There you go. Listen to that sound. I know, it's it's adorable. Isn't it? It's such a cute little sound from a bird. And that's pretty much all you hear for the rest of the game. Yeah. <laughs> oh, you also hear, <gasps> because when you jump, well, this game could drive a dad mad. Try jumping. That's the other sound that you hear most of the time. Incredible. Yeah. So Kazooie's really the star, you would... Pretty you much. Say. In fact, Banjo is not good for anything, as it turns out. Hmm. He's not good for attacking. I mean, he can roll into things, that's about it. He's not good for walking, because he walks so slowly. Most of the time, and he doesn't double jump, he does just the single jump. Most of the time, you're going to be running with Kazooie, you're going to be double jumping with Kazooie, you're going to be attacking with Kazooie. This game should just be called Kazooie. Banjo doesn't have a whole lot to do with it, except for to serve as the vessel for the bird. He's the bird vessel. <laughs> kind of goofy. 
Oh, you got another skeleton under here. Nice. I think it let me keep my old one. Yeah, yeah, those are permanent. Oh, good. Those don't reset because you will need those. You will need those. They are not just collectibles. Let me in. Let me in your mouth, totem. Nope. All right. Uh, you're supposed to shoot eggs in those. I feel like you have to have the egg ability already, but maybe not. Maybe you find it... Oh, da -da 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 blah. <laughs> What's up? Talk to that mole. Oh, yeah, maybe he'll give me the egg ability, huh? Beak Buster. Alright. Oh, this is a butt slam. Of course, Kazooie does it. Nest girl? Is, is Kazooie a girl? Yeah. Oh, I didn't know that. Wow, that's a, that's a brutal attack. Yeah. So where do you think you should use that? On top of these, uh, these, these huts. Maybe. It's, Maybe. It seems, it seems like it would be reasonable. Ho ho! Amazing. Notes. Let me get some notes out of it. They're notes. I'm gonna kill this guy too. Yeah, I, I, now that you mention it, I feel bad about killing that guy. Everything in this game has eyes. Yeah. Anything Everything with eyes, it, it, any, any human being with a heart that sees something with eyes get killed. Except for a spider. They feel bad. Well, you can't see the eyes on a spider. Oh, that's true. Unless you look at it really close and they have about 17 or 19 eyes. It's an odd number. I'm, I know yeah. that for sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, you're right. You're right. I love when you, uh, when you sound very convinced by my arguments. Right. I always am, in fact. Hey, so it's... it's Wow, I got a Jinjo for that? Yeah. It's the end of the night on GS. It is. You might hear our power waning. Hey, it's a one-up. Everyone... This is the fourth episode we've recorded tonight, so it's, uh... Hey, we stopped doing that a while ago because... Well, for a couple reasons. One, it's hard to do that many. It takes yeah. a lot of time. And two, it just get, makes you tired. And by the end of the night, you don't sound that great. Should we go in here? Sure! Okay. Oh, there was something inside the eye. Yeah, there was. There. It was a Jiggy. We need those jiggies. They're the most important item in the game. Pretty much. Filthy feathered one. Wow. Everyone's a real jerk to Kazooie, including Banjo. Yeah, but also she's a real jerk to everybody else. Oh, good. So this game really teaches children how to get along with birds. Sure. That's what I mean by this game has them. so much personality. You know? Oh, I'm not paying attention to what this... Uh, this oh. Mumbo was telling what us. What he said was bring him five tokens. You can see by that sign next to his face. Oh, yeah, yeah. Well, that's... I don't think he even needed to tell me that. No. But you don't have five tokens, so you yeah, can't do anything Yeah, I'm here. just... I'm just really annoyed about that. There's something up there! Get it! Yeah, we're gonna have to do our uh, super jump. Aha! Can we get up there? You oh, sure, sure can. can. Amazing. And now that you have the talent trot, you can actually go to the next area, provided you have enough jiggies. I don't remember how many you need. But, I don't know, you can stick around here if you want. There's plenty more to do. Do you want to take us there? Sure. Or do you want me to keep going? Sure. We're, we're planning on switching off Oops. Uh, somewhere see. in this episode. So, Ed's the better player, but we wanted him to give the intro at the very least. I would like to... Yeah, why... Why can't you launch eggs? I don't remember if that's something you get, or if... Hmm... What about this hut? Can you smash through this hut? You sure can. Yeah, let's let's smash it. There's a there's a jigsaw, Jiggy, in there. I found it. <laughs> Ed just looked at me with such a look of disdain. Alright. I don't know if I would call it disdain, I would call it, uh... I found it. You're amazing at this. Thanks. Yeah, I know. <laughs> thanks. Thanks. Speaking of thanks, there's a... I think it's a... What is it? Is it a pot or a gravestone or a tombstone or something? In Mad Monster Mansion, which is like the 6th or 7th level in this game. Mm -hmm. And when you feed it eggs, it goes... Thank you. But... It's very hard to make out. And it sounds like something else, or is a... Yeah. Oh, okay. What does it sound like? It sounds like something you shouldn't say in a kid's game. Put it that way. Thank you. Fuck you? Yeah. Oh, really? And I know I didn't do it justice, but wait until you actually hear it. You'll you'll understand immediately. And in fact, that I think that's Grant Kirkhope saying that line. <laughs> like, I think he recorded all the dialogue for this game. 
Really? Um, well, no, no, not, I lied. Not all the dialogue, but a lot of the incidental dialogue. So the trick here, by the way, is to climb that tree. Completely intuitive, right? Yeah. And then, oh, you just climb the tree and then you give the little monkey an orange. Yep. Because, as we all know... So the big monkey breaks oranges and the little monkey just wants to eat the oranges and the big monkey's just yep. trashing them. What a, what a wasteful little guy. I know. And as we all know... And you get a jiggy and a bunch of eggs for yeah. your effort. And you can talk to the mole guy up there. Amazing. Monkeys love... What do monkeys love? Oranges. Everybody knows that. I think I've said the word amazing in this episode more oh. than... The, uh, the mole guy's up here. So this is where you learn the... Oh, not there. Not there, yeah. That's oh, a, yeah. That's, a, that's the monkey across this the is, there this, is, there this is. This is it. So he's going to teach us how to use eggs, and... There's that fella. We're going to use them. Time for the buzzer to learn the ancient ways of the egg. So I just got a text. Should I tell the story? Or should we keep talking about Banjo-Kazooie? I'll tell the story. This is a lot of dialogue. Yeah, it's not too long anyway. Okay. Yeah, I just got a text I had that from a guy that I had a meeting with yesterday. Uh... uh our landlord uh, knew a guy that had a job that he wanted done, and all they knew that was that it was art related, and that's that's what I do. I'm, a, I'm an illustrator for the most part. I don't really do much graphic design or web design or anything like that. But and yeah, I'm doing all the graphics for our game Glass Breaker, so you can see some of my work in that if you want to check out our devlogs. But um, so yeah, they gave my number to this guy with my permission, of course, and he called me a couple days ago, and. He, I was asking him, what what is the job? What what do you what do you need me to do? And he wouldn't tell me how much it was, how or not how much. Uh, he wouldn't tell me exactly what the job was. He was telling me that he had a, a business and something about a website. And I asked him, is it a web design job then? And he's like, no no, it's not a web design. The code's already done. It's not a web design job. So, uh, against my better judgment, I agreed to meet with him the following day. It was Saturday yesterday. So uh, I called him and I went went over there the next day. And he greets me, slaps my hand, a big handshake, big oh, handshake. Like he knows you, yeah. yeah. He's so excited to see me, he's a, my friend and all this, you know, this kind of guy. And so he proceeds to take me into his meeting room, and he has whiteboards all over the walls. Every wall has a, is just basically the entire wall is a whiteboard. He starts writing on the walls, showing me all these... Uh, giving a presentation basically of what his business is, what his business model is, and he is showing out. He's telling me how much money he gets for all of these products. Wow. It is high. He's his his I feel like this guy's this guy's probably loaded if he's making this much money off of one sale. So Yeah, he he, he goes over his entire business plan, which takes like forty five minutes. Jeez. He gave you a presentation. Basically. And then because he felt like I would need to know this to do the job. And I'm being nice. I shouldn't have been nice. I should have told him to get to the point. I should have told him to get to the point the day before on the phone, but I didn't. And then if we finally get to the, the bottom of it. And he starts showing me his website, how it's laid out. And it looks, it's it's just coded. It's not laid out well at all. I'm not, I don't know how to make a great website. I know a little bit about graphic design and how to lay things out. I'm passable at it, but I've never done it professionally. And so it turns out, yeah, it's a web design job. I'm, I'm not a web designer. Right. So he invited me out to do a web design job, and I told him I couldn't do it. He's like, that's okay. I just, I just want your opinion. I can do, I can do a lot of it myself, but you know, you have a good, you probably have a good eye for this. So maybe you can just help me out. And then he, uh, we also probably should have talked about the rate earlier because right. he offered me a rate, and it was pretty low, like almost laughably low for a guy who was showing out so much earlier in the day. He's low balling Showing you. off how much how much he had and then I, I, I it was it wasn't minimum wage but it was way less than uh, than I'm worth for sure right and way less than I was expecting this guy to say like I I, I was kind of rude I almost laughed like when he said it and then I told him the number that I was uh, closer to what I was expecting which was actually more than double what he said it was uh, six thousand dollars a day and uh, he said no 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 I can't do that all right then so I said, I wish that we would have uh, talked about what the job was yeah. and what what the rate was going to be ahead of time. So, you know, partly my fault, but also partly his fault. The guy, he, this, he wasn't a young guy. This is an older guy who's been in business for many decades. Yeah. And you would think that he would know to be more upfront. But anyway, yeah, so he wasted, well, we both wasted each other's time, I guess. But so I was kind of annoyed. And then... On the way out, he goes to shake my hand, but instead of that big slap on the hand, he's, his head's kind of down, and he's like, oh, thanks, thanks for coming over. And anyway, he just sent me a text message apologizing for it, so, and, you know, but... Anyway, that's a story. Pretty interesting, huh? 
He should have reimbursed you for your time at a rate of six thousand dollars a day. He did actually. He did actually offer to give me some money for my time, but I was like, if he's cheap, if he's so cheap, he's loaded. He said he was loaded. I thought he was, but the rate he offered me was not something that a loaded man would. Well, no, offer another no, man. no, no. That is completely wrong. Yeah, I, that guess, is a I guess a lot of people who are rich are also cheap, but I mean, there's a reason that some people are rich, and it's yeah. not because they throw money at everybody. It's because they know how to manage their money, and they know if somebody's willing to settle for X amount of dollars, then why would they offer more? Sure, sure. Right. So yeah, just because he's offering you a low rate, he didn't even mean... try to talk me down. He was just like, no, no, no. <laughs> It was, a, it was a job I didn't want to do. Yeah. And also, it's a web design job. I'm not a web designer. <laughs> yeah, yeah, <Well>. so. <laughs> anyway. Well, Stories from work on GS. From work. Well, I'm missing the... I see a honeycomb up there, but uh, I'm missing some notes, and there's one more jiggy. And I'm missing a mumbo token, which I think it might be outside. In fact, I'm sure of it. So do we need to head out and reset the whole level again? We need to leave, yeah. So once we leave, we'll so have to... doesn't get, that get annoying when you have to keep recollecting everything at every level? Uh, or are you, are you, or maybe there's just like a run where you're trying to get all the music notes or something. Maybe you're just doing yeah. a music note run, so it's like you, trying to get the red coins where you really don't give a fuck if you collect three or four red coins in a run. Yeah, you can kind of like yeah, okay. separate out the whatever you want to do. I can kind of see that. But for example, now we can get to Treasure Trove Cove. Now that we have the talent trot. Yeah, this this castle, the lair, I guess, is actually massive. And so you can see our minimum here to get through is 50 notes, which we have... I think we have like 95 or something. And now he's teaching us about note doors. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, thanks. He refilled our health. It seems pretty easy to refill your health in this game. Yeah, it's pretty generous. Like but Mario 64, every time you get a coin, you get some health back. Yeah. It kind of follows a similar formula. Um, m most of the enemies in the game drop health for you. Yeah, so as long as you have at least a 50% win rate against them, as long as you yeah. take damage, yeah. as long as you don't take more than one damage from each enemy, you're probably going to be fine. Although, the later levels are pretty hard. You definitely die in this game. You can you can remove or you can't. You can only remove you can only remove jiggies when the picture is not completed. Oh, okay. So, so now you, I can't. If you change your mind later, right. it's kind of cool that they added that in case somebody made a mistake and they wanted to go to another level. But and there's, there's really no reason to do that though, as the player. Okay. Because you want to go to every level anyway. They never lock you into a position where you you can't access anything, I guess. Yeah, 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 that's exact. I mean, because if you're spending jiggies on a level, then you're going to find at least ten more. Yeah. Yeah, just mean if you spread all your jiggies out of, across a bunch of portraits or whatever. Oh, and yeah. And then maybe, maybe there's a point where you could spread it so thin that you couldn't possibly coll collect enough jiggies. Maybe that's why maybe. they allow you to remove it. Or maybe it's just a nice feature, just to be huh. nice to the player in case they have mistakenly put jiggies in more than one picture by mistake. I never thought of that. That's a good, uh, good thought. Yeah, so now there's a bunch of places we can go. We can go down here in this this pipe. There's a pipe uh, just up there, past the waterfall that we could have gone into. And there's a treasure chest around here somewhere where we can go to Treasure Trove Cove. What is this? is Click Clock Wood. This is the final area of the game. Holy. Look how many jiggies it's missing. Yeah, it's missing a lot. Almost all of them. In fact, all but one. Can, can you access that then if you have enough... Um, you somehow collect. I guess maybe maybe no. you can't collect enough. Maybe it's just set up so you can't collect. Well, I mean, you you could, but you also have to you have to enable the the ability to insert jiggies into that painting. Oh right. Yeah. Okay. So it's a two step thing. Yeah, a lot of lot of rules. A lot of rules. Yeah. Lot of I mean, rules, a lot of items to collect. Yeah. It's it's intuitive though. It, it doesn't ever like get confusing really. Yeah. Yeah. It's got to be easy enough for six year olds to understand. So. Hmm. This is still from... Eh, no, I'm not going to say that. That's not really that important, what I was about to say. What's with this cannon? Are we going to get fired out of it? Uh, I think it does fire something. There's, I think there's a hidden switch in this level somewhere that involves that cannon. I kind of forget. It's been a long time, but... Man, this game is still fun. Still as fun as it ever was. Oh, this terrifying shark. 
There is a shark in this game, in this level specifically, that is terrifying. And I will show it to you anytime you enter the water. It's right here. And that music... This is how you can die in this game. It's, it's like... It's like Dollar Store Jaws music, you know? Yeah. Oh, this game... God! This level's fantastic because in the first level we got the ability to run quickly, right? And in this level yeah. we get the ability to... F Wait, is it this level? You get the ability to fly? You do fly a lot in this level, but I don't remember if you get that here or if you oh, get that in Freeze Easy Peak. Maybe it's, yeah, maybe it's later and you just gotta come back. I don't know. Well, actually it might be right here. That would be cool. I'm, I'm pretty sure it's here. Yeah, it says I help uh, Kazooie fly. When she knows how to fly. But only on the feather. Oh, this yeah. is just like Donkey Kong 64. You can only use the abilities when you're on the tile. Yeah. I remember Donkey Kong 64 looking looking a little bit better. Like the tile graphic, all the graphics pretty much. I think it came out later. Uh, oh, also it used the expansion pack. That's why. Oh, it used yeah. That, that goofy looking, the thing with the red. Look it up. Look it up yeah. on Google Images the if you're... Oops. The N64 expansion pack. If yeah. you've never seen that. It's a pretty ridiculous contraption. So this was fantastic Especially back in the day. Especially if you're a, a younger game player right now and you haven't seen all the weird peripherals that we used to use so any level with one of those uh, feather tiles you can fly anywhere as long as you have enough feathers this game really felt massive especially this so I entered a I entered this that cavern down below and it puts you on top of the entire level and for the N64, this was a big deal. This was a big deal. You can see the entire little yeah, this, from here. It is impressive for the, for the time, for sure. And if you jump off off of this this upper area, you can fall all the way down. I'm amazed. Yeah, I mean, you can still see. Yeah, when it's I was still drawing the graphics yeah. that far away. When I was a kid, this blew my mind because you could see the entire level. That was a big deal. Yeah. And you look over, you're like, wow, it's so beautiful and realistic. I know. <laughs> like, I used to think this was amazing. But look, you can even see where the water ends and the level stops. And every time I look at an old, even a game from, like, a few years back, I remember seeing, like, Far Cry 3. I thought it was amazing. Yeah. Like, Far Cry 4 blew it out of the water. Yeah. And now, then, like, Resident Evil 6, Resident Evil... There it is. Like, Resident Evil 7 now is... I think that's probably, like, the king for realistic graphics, at least. Just For just, now. Just considering... Realistic graphics, maybe not the uh, the best overall graphics, but it's pretty high up there. Yeah. You want to jump off? Is that a good idea? Yeah, fuck yeah, jump off. Fly. Oh, you can't fly. Oh, I can't. You... I can't just fly anywhere, Joe. You can, you can you can fall gracefully though. I can. Sweet. Well, for a little while. Oh yeah, you start... that runs out. Oh, I thought that I was in the like water. That looks like a mine. That is totally hey, there's mine. A, there's a jigsaw under there. Well, we've got we've gotten so many jiggies. I feel quite rewarded. What do we get? This is our tenth jiggy, I think. One. It's our first. Well, it's our first in this it's level. A, it's our first. Ed. Oh. I, I have to correct you. Uh, you said tenth. You were off by nine. Oh. That's pretty high. And uh, here on Game Soup, we we have a small room for we have a little bit of room for error with our employees, but not nine. When they uh, estimate numbers and are nine off, you know we have to let them. Oh, what number oh. skull was? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so like every year uh, okay. when we do our game soup taxes and we're off by ten dollars, we get audited. Oh man, did you claim? Now we shouldn't say anything about that. Claim our. Uh... Yeah, let's not talk about it. <laughs> yeah, I know exactly what you're gonna yeah, say. Who, yeah, that's not even a topic for the program. That's not a topic for anything. Taxes, tax season. Well, I got wrecked this year on taxes. Oh yeah. How much did you have to pay in taxes, or how much was your tax refund? Put it in the comments. <laughs> Just tell us how much money you make. <laughs> also, give us your address and social security number. Yeah, every, every year, I get destroyed on taxes. Yeah, it's really fun. Don't be self-employed. You actually get taxed at a higher rate for you're, being. Yeah, you're, you're encouraged to not work for yourself. You're, you're encouraged to not start new businesses. Yeah, you're and, encouraged uh, to settle down and work for the man. And, and increase, increase the uh, the GDP of your country. I don't know. I don't know. What the, I don't know what the hell I'm talking about. GDP stands for Grand Discipline Priest, right? Yeah, like sure discipline, does. Yeah, that's. Uh... I'm pretty sure that's what it means. Yeah. Like the Grand, the Grand Wizard. Isn't that a position in the government, the Grand Wizard? <laughs> I think it's a position in another organization. The. The strong arm of the Democratic Party, historically, which I was surprised oh. to learn fairly recently. But right. we won't go into. We won't go into this group because this is a. 
just a terrible group. Nobody likes politics. It's not really, it's not really a political group anymore. It's more just a hate group. It's the KKK. I know. <laughs> <laughs> I think that the Democratic Party has since distanced itself from the organization. But uh, a lot of the, th never mind. Uh, let's distance ourselves from this conversation. Not, be not because it's too no. touchy, but no. just because it's not very interesting, and this crab is a, a lot more interesting right. right now. That's exactly it. That's exactly yeah. it. Well, Banjo-Kazooie, this is one of my favorite games of all time. Still. It's still amazing. Can you believe it? Look at this crab bitch. I died. So, I gotta start the entire level over, but we're not gonna do that. We're gonna call it here. This is Banjo-Kazooie. It's available now for the Nintendo 64, <laughs> the PC. I didn't know you were going to do that. <laughs> I should have guessed that you would do oh. that, but somehow you took me by surprise. Yeah. It was uh, developed by Rare and published by Nintendo, I And think. thank you for providing us uh, the copy of this ROM yeah. to Rare. Rare, uh, we actually emailed an employee at Rare instead of just going on CoolRoms.com. Yeah, I was going to say Cherry Roms, but CoolRoms. Cherry Roms. Roms. We, yeah. got, we got one for each in case one didn't work. Yeah. They always do, uh, so... Also, let us let us know what you think of GS Classics. Any, I don't know, any suggestions, ideas you have? Did you like uh, the first couple of games that we chose to play on GS Classics? And uh, what are your memories of Banjo Kazooie or other games from this era? Let us know what you thought. We also have a Patreon. Check it out in the link below. All right, we'll see you next time. <laughs>